Hi, welcome to Citizen Survival Plan. Welcome back if you've been here before. In today's video, I just want to go over a couple power setups, whether you buy a power station or make one yourself, some solar panel connections, and just some ideas to make power in an emergency. So without further ado, let's just get right into the video. Okay, so let's start with the simplest way you can do it. This is obviously the most expensive way to do it because these power stations cost a pretty penny. This is going to cost you anywhere from 800 to 15, even upwards of $2,000 if you go with a Jackery that's like a larger size. But they are the simplest way to make power. The con to these is they're not serviceable. All of the electronics and the inverter and all the parts are inside of them. And I've had these go bad. This Opus has had an inverter go bad in it. Opus did cover it but it's just something to think about. I can't open this thing up and repair it and buy parts for it. The biggest pro to having these is the passive charging on these is incredible. Now there is a limit to that. You don't want to run so much power through it. You're heating the batteries up. There is fans and stuff, but again, there's a limit to how much power you can run through them without damaging them. Another huge pro to these is they're portable. We're gonna show you what is up next, but it's hard to move the next item. These are great just for picking up and moving. I can kind of put these wherever I want, hook power up inside or outside or run a solar panel to it, or move it to a completely new location, and there's not really a lot that you have to bring with you. Just this and the panel. Okay, so this is sort of build your own power station. People comment this all the time. They're okay. There's a lot of cons with this. Just moving it into this room was a pain. My wife had to grab the inverter. I had to grab the battery without taking this whole thing apart. So th this is really not mobile at all unless you want to disassemble and reassemble it. But dollar for dollar, this is the most efficient way to get good power. This is an Orion 1000 battery pack. And it is hooked to a Voltworks 2000 watt inverter. So you could run a hot plate or a heater or whatever you wanted off this. It puts out plenty of power. And this battery is about 1200 watt hours, give or take. So it's a lot of power and it's really cheap. The battery was about 250. The inverter came with these battery cables and that was about 175 bucks. And then we're going to get into this in a little bit, but this has an inline solar charger on it and I can charge it through a up to 200 watt solar panel. So decent charging, good power, and it's pretty cheap. A big con on this is I would say the passive charging isn't nearly as good on a setup like this as it would be on an Opus or a Jackery or EcoFlow or, or something you can buy. And the reason behind that is the charge cable on this and these terminals are all going through one port, if you will. They're all going through the terminals. So it will do passive charging. Like I can run my radio equipment and charge this at the same time. The problem is if you do it too much, you will find these terminals will get hot and it's kind of unsafe. So I will do little tiny things while passive charging, but like running a hot plate or something while it's passive charging is just a no-go for this setup. So this is what this thing is. I have a DC to an SAE connector that runs through the solar charger. This will take about 200 watts of power and run it through. This is the Orion 1000 battery pack. I really like this. My big gripe with people making their own power stations and just using a battery with no battery meter on it is finding how much energy is in the battery is kind of tricky. You could do voltage readings and stuff, but I really, really just like that screen. I like to know how much power is in that battery. So I know when to conserve and I, went, I know when I can run a lot of power. So the inverter, this Voltworks inverter did come with these really nice cables. And I know that's like a big thing is I never know when the cables and stuff are going to come with this. And then you have to order them separately. So these are really nice. They hooked right up to the battery and it runs to the back of this. So big, nice, tough cables. Uh, you're not going to have any overheating problems with that. So 
definitely a big pro. I have a trap in it, as always, all my power equipment. And another kind of con to this is it really doesn't have a lot of plugs. So you get two plugs and one USB port. So it's not going to be as much as a power station you can buy. But still, good power. You can run heavy-duty stuff off of it, and it definitely works. Let's talk about some solar panel options you have for power stations or if you built your own. I do not like these solar panels that come with any of them, the Jackery, the EcoFlow, anything. I do not like these, and here's why. I cannot leave these outside. They are typically in a cloth bag, and the connections are not waterproof. Now, I'm sure there's some exceptions, but generally speaking, these are a waste of money. They're more expensive, and I just do not like them. The only thing they have going for them is they fold up. Let's talk about what you should get. If I was going to do it all over again, I would never buy these. I would get outdoor solar panels, get the right connections, and just run your cables to the inside of your house. This is a Renogy outdoor solar panel. Now, I'm not brand sensitive, but if they look like this and they have MC4 connectors on the back, which I'm going to show you in one second, this is the way that I would do it. These are the best. I leave these outside to power my equipment, and I never mess with them. They sit in the rain, the snow, the sun. It doesn't matter. They're always out. So this is what you're going to see on the back of these panels. This is the back of that 100-watt panel. These are MC4 connectors. They look like this when they're not connected. You are going to need some tools to disconnect them, but not to connect them. And I'm going to show you that in one second. And we'll also put a link in the video for them. So this is an MC4 to an SAE connection. And you can get the MC4 connectors in anything. At the end of this panel, the DC 8 millimeter connector and this plugs into my Jackery, my Opus, and the solar generator that I built, the Orion 1000 with the inverter. So I try and keep everything with the same connections, but you can order MC4 connectors for the back of these in any configuration, basically. So these are the back of the MC4 connectors. If you ever connect them, you'll know how difficult they are to disconnect. This is a tool to disconnect them, and it is extremely helpful when you are doing this. I'm going to leave a link to these in the description of the video. They will be needed if you ever need to disconnect these. The last thing I want to talk about is having some sort of fuel generator. Um, there is times where the sun won't shine, you will deplete your batteries, and having backup fuel power is going to be a huge deal. I like to use propane because the fuel stores basically indefinitely and we can use it for all kinds of other stuff. And I don't want to get into this. That's not what this video is about. But our emergency heaters run off propane. We have a valve to refill prop smaller propane tanks to run the heaters. So it all kind of ties into what I do. I love propane. It is way better than gasoline for prepping reasons. There's probably an argument to be made that gasoline, maybe generators are a little bit better, but for prepping, propane is the way to go. No gummed up carburetors, no problems. This is where I'm gonna talk about why those power stations have an advantage over building your own solar generator with an inverter and a battery. This is a power brick for the Opus, and they run almost 200 watts a piece, and I can hook two of these up to the Opus. I can run this generator, and I can recharge that Opus very quickly, because running these is really inefficient. It's not like you're going to run your radios or anything else off this. You're going to run something big for a short amount of time on these, or recharge your power station with them with propane fuel. A big problem with running these fuel generators is they draw attention to yourself. They're loud, they have fumes, and there's ways to mitigate this. You can build soundproof boxes to put them in and run like, you know, homemade mufflers that come out of them. But typically these are gonna be backup. This is gonna be backup to charge your batteries and stuff. 
when you're in your home running your radios or running anything appliance wise inside your house you're gonna be running it off your opuses your jackeries your solar power stations or if you built one like the orion 1000 with the inverter hooked up to it that i showed you you're going to be running stuff like that in your home with a solar panel this really is a backup system well that wraps up this video i hope you guys got something out of this in my opinion i would start with solar and battery packs and then make sure you get a fuel generator as a backup. I know it's a little bit more expensive, but I like to have a lot of different ways and backups to make power. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.